Eclipse is a modern IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, where all the necessary tools for developing your code are integrated into one piece. You can use Eclipse to solve your assignment and exercises. Before we proceed with this, so they tell, this tells you how to work with Eclipse, how to create a Python development project. So before this, all you need to do is how to install Eclipse. So for the installation of Eclipse, especially this Java Enterprise Edition, Java E stands for Enterprise Edition, you will have to install Java Enterprise Edition. If you need to install Java Enterprise Edition on your machine, you should ensure that Java is installed in your machine. Then after installing Java, ensure you are able to install the Java Enterprise Edition. And after installing Enterprise Edition, there is a um, you know plugin. There is a plugin available for Python. So the name of it is PyDev. So then search it on internet how to install PyDev module on Eclipse. So post installation of this only, you should be able to proceed with whatever they have given here. I'm sure you should be able to do it on your own. On your own, it will definitely give you a great learning experience, right? So you can actually post install. So remember, Eclipse installation requires Java installation. Post Java installation, you'll have to install uh, Java Enterprise Edition IDE. You'll have to choose download Java E IDE if you Eclipse Java. Enterprise Edition ID, if you type it, you will get the uh, required links. Then proceed with installation, post installation, ensure you are able to install PyDev module on Eclipse. So it's a three stage process. Once you're done with this, you can go ahead and proceed with all these steps. So if required, I'll do a separate video presentation on this later. So far, we looked at examples where the various values were directly written inside a program. But programming languages also help us to get an input from the user. Let's see how we can accept an input for a Python program written in Eclipse. Copy the below given code, given program to solutions.py. Execute the entire execute, enter the input and observe the result. Modify the program to accept the year of birth and current year and display name. Is your so let's say Vijay is the name Vijay is 20 years old, something like this. Input provided not input provided by the user is always considered to be a string. You may have to convert it to appropriate type because by default this input of this function uh, this helps us to read values from users. But by default, whatever value you receive with this, it is treated as string. I can show you an example for the same. So I have taken this program and copied this program and pasted it on a text editor. I am going to run this program. The location in which I have saved this program is documents python programs and the file name is input underscore test dot py. Let me open the terminal and go to the navigate to the path. See this page, the documents, and then you will have four arrows Python programs. So, th this is where my Python program is located. I'm going to run this. So, what we have is Python 3. So, Python 3 and input underscore test py that's my file name, right? So, it's, it'll ask you what's your name. Let's say if my name is Vetri, I give Vetri. So, I get the message back which is your name. I'm going to do a little uh, slight changes on this program, right? So they asked us to print a message like this. Modify the program to accept the year of birth and current year. Display the age of the person. Name is. So they, they want us to read three inputs. Name of the person, year of the birth and current year. So you'll have to subtract year of birth from current year. Then you'll, um, you'll get the years old how many years old the person is. Then you'll have to give a message like this. So all we need to do is do a little change, slight changes on the code. So I have done necessary changes to read input, year of birth and current year. So whichever values I have uh, read here, that's being converted to integer. So I have cast it to, by default, every single value read through input of function is treated as a string. 
then we left con year of birth is going to be integer so i have converted this to into integer so int of again current year converting it to integer then to find out the age current year minus year of birth we'll get age now let's run this program so this is what they wanted as name is years old so name is years old age old anything is fine i have used the variable as age here let's say vetri vetri is let's say 25 years or 30 years old whatever it may be let's run this program python 3 enter your name so it's a vetri year of birth let's say 1990 current year is 2019 it is vetri is 29 years old let's move on with uh, assignments write a python program to find and display the product of three positive integer values based on the rule mentioned below it should display the product of three values except when one of the integer value is 7 in that case 7 should not be included in the product and the values to its left also should not be included if there is only one value to be considered display that value itself if no value if no values can be included in the product display minus 1 assume that if 7 is one of the positive uh, positive integer values then it will occur only once refer the sample input output given below sample input 1358 so 1358 it has no 7s so we have to multiply all the 3 3 into 5 into 1 it's 15 expected output is 15 Three seven eight, three seven eight. There is seven occurs, so you will have to ignore seven, and a digit left to it also should be ignored. So the, you will have to ignore three and seven, so you will get eight. If it is seven uh, appearing as a first digit, so you will have to ignore seven alone. Then the product of four into three, twelve. Now you will have seven is appearing as the third position, so you will have to ignore seven, and the values digits to its left also. So. you have to return if there is only one value to be display considered display that values if no values can be included in the product display minus 1 so one is display let's look at before we proceed and look at the variables they have given so they have given a variable product all you need to do is write up write the code to find out product so we have three numbers we we'll have to take three different scenarios then we we'll have to proceed with this So logic behind here is very simple. If number one is seven, right? First number is seven. Then we'll have to perform multiplication for number two and number three. If number going number two is going to be seven, then we'll have to ignore number two as well as number one. So the product will be number three. If number three is going to be seven, then we'll ignore everything and the product value should be minus one. Otherwise, you'll have to uh, multiply all the three numbers. Then print the result. Execute this program. Verify. So all the test cases are passed. Then you can submit and proceed with this. The next assignment. You have x number of five rupee coins and y number of one rupee coins. You want to purchase an item for an amount z. For an amount z, the shopkeeper wants you to provide exact change. Exact change. You want to pay using a minimum number of coins. How many five rupee coins and one rupee coins will you use? If exact change is not possible, then display minus one. Let's look at sample input and sample outputs. So available rupee is one one coins or two. Available rupee is five coins or four. So four into five twenty, two into one two twenty plus two twenty two. Amount to be made is twenty one. So within the limit, I think we should be able to do this. Then expected output should be rupees one coin needed one. Rupees five notes needed, four. Again for another example, eleven hundred rupees available, two five rupees available. Amount to be paid is eleven. So uh, rupees one expected, one coin expected is one. Rupees five notes expected two. There is another situation. One rupee coin available three, five rupee coins available, five rupee no notes available or uh, three. So three into five fifteen. Three into three, three into one, three. Fifteen plus uh, three, eighteen. But amount to be made is nineteen. Then the total amount you have with you is eighteen, but actual amount to be made is nineteen. It is not possible, so it has to display minus one. So we'll have to write down the logic for this. 
So I have taken another variable uh, named as flag equal to zero for a reason. Then I am trying to find out rupees to make is less than or is equal to number of phi into phi plus number of funds. So for whichever amount you have with you, is it uh, greater than or equal to the rupees to make amount? So you have amount to be made and you have some amounts. So you are going to compare, right? So you have to ensure it is there. If it is true, then you will you'll find out number of phi's and number of funds using this. Then you check if phi's or less than is equal to number of phi, ones or less than is equal to number of funds. If it is so, you directly assign it. You set flag as a one. Otherwise, you will have to check. There are situations where um, you will have uh, phi's lesser but ones more. But the amount to be made will be within the available limit. Then we will have to do a different logic for this. Right? Set flag one. So by default, if it, if the condition is not about to be executed, if number of uh, phi, phi is needed, one needed is not about to be set, the flag value will be zero. When the flag value is one, then you check, you display number of phi is needed, number of ones needed. Otherwise, you print uh, minus one. Let's execute this program. Verify this program. It says all the test cases are passed. We can submit and move on. You can actually refer my uh, GitHub profile, Vajiram P. Uh, repository name is InfiTQPF in which the, entire, the complete code is available. So not just this, all the day two assignments are available on this. An organization has desired to provide a salary hike to its employees based on their job level. Employees can be in job level 3, 4 or 5. Hike percentage based on job levels are given below. Job level 3, hike percentage is 15. Job level 4, 7 percentage hike. Job level 5, 5 percentage hike. In case of invalid job level, consider hike percentage to be zero. Given the current salary and job level, write a Python program to find and display the new salary of an employee, identify the test data and use it to test the program. So look at this. So you'll have problem statement, submission and test data also. You'll have to ensure you give the value to this. Right? So we'll have to identify what is the a new salary of an employee. The simple math job level 3 current salary into current salary into 15 per 100 will give you 15 percent uh, of the salary amount, then you will add it to the current salary. Again, for job level 4, you will say 7 percent in the same manner. For job level 5, it is a 5 percent, and they have very clearly mentioned in case of invalid job level, consider height percentage to be 0. So, what you are going to do? New salary, if any other job level is given, new salary will also be a current salary. So you get to check how it works. Right. So execute this. Yes, you get some amount. Now we are going to test the program using some of the values. So 15,000 is the uh, amount current salary. Job level is 3. Expert output should, should be uh, 17250. Let's check what happens if we give the value as a 15,000. Right. So you get 15,000. Execute this program. So you get 17250. So, so it is giving an integer value. Uh, but what we have got was a float, it comes with a float value. So do simple work while returning convert new salary into integer type. Then what happens? When you execute this, you get 17250 as output. So actual output is also 17250 test cases passed. So I am going to add a couple of test cases for all the job levels, uh, then see what happens. For the same 15,000, we have taken three different job levels 3, 4, 5 and 7, 7 is an invalid job level, 4, 5 we have the value. So I have calculated amount to be uh, uh, to be shown for uh, these 3 job levels. If it is 4, job level 4, then expected output should be 16050. Uh, for a job level 5, it should be 15750 because 5% hike. Here it is 7% hike. Here it is a 15% hike. Then for a 15,000, it is an invalid job level. So the hike, there should be no hike, the same salary we should display. Let's run this program and see what happens. I am going to take job level 4 for the same value. 4, execute this, you get 16050. Yes, you get 16050. Then we will change it to 5, 15750. Yes, 15750. This test case is fast. This is also passed. The last one is different, be it a 7 or be it 8, any value we give, it gives us a 
same value then you say 15,000 yes all the test cases are passed then we can submit it a travel on a visit to India is in need of some of Indian rupees but he has money belonging to another country he wants to know how much money he should provide in the currency he has to get the specified amount Indian rupee in Indian rupee write a Python program to implement a currency calculator which accepts the amount needed in INR and the name of the currency which the traveler has the program should identify and display the amount the traveler should provide in currency he has to get the specified amount in Indian rupees note use the for forex information provided in the below in the below in the table below for the calculation consider that only the currency names mentioned in the table are valid for any other invalid currency name display min minus one currency name is zero British pound Australian dollar Canadian dollar so they have given equivalent number 0 0.01417 0 0.0100 0 0.02140 0 0.02027 0 0.02027 uh, also identify the test data and use it to test the program so we need to submit this is where we need to write the logic and submit the value then we will have to have a test data right i will take same 3500 for all the values and check invalid also i will already give a different currency also so there is a, this is a simple logic behind this if currency current currency name is so and so current currency amount is equal to amount needed in rupee in indian rupee into 0 0.01 if it is going to be british pound then into 0 0.0100 if it is going to be australian dollar then 0 0.2140 canadian dollar it is 02027 it's as, as given here right we follow the same logic then if for any other currency the current currency amount should be minus one it's very clearly given if the currency amount is zero currency name is zero british pound australian dollar canadian dollar it does some calculation otherwise it really gives us minus one they very clearly given consider that only the currency names mentioned in the table are valid for any other invalid currency name we will have to display minus one so that's the reason we have given a currency current currency amount is equal to minus one now let's run this program and see what happens amount is 2000 let's test this with 3500 now let's test this whatever i have i have i need the amount needed as amount needed in indian rupees is 2000 current currency name is euro so for the 2000 rupees amount they'll have to give 28.34 euros let's test this program with the available data 3500 british pound right 3500 is the amount needed then the currency name current currency name is british Oh. is it 35.0 yes so it is right 35.0 this case is passed so i wanted to have uh, you know if it's a two digit or one digit after the decimals but what we get is actual output is though the before dot before the decimal points the value is same but after the decimal somebody might be very specific about having two digit or one digit right in this example i have taken two digits maybe if you like to have only one digit you can have something similar to this or you can have a round of value also so you'll have to check we get the rounded off value also right if it is not so the test case will become a uh, fail then you'll have to rework the code modify the code uh, either round off or go for a two digit uh, round off or one digit round off ensure you all the test cases are passed and proceed so there's a logic behind this particular code you can modify as 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 expected right yeah let's move on food corner home uh, delivers vegetarian and non-vegetarian combos to its customer based on order a vegetarian combo cost rupees 120 per plate and a non-vegetarian combo cost rupees 150 per plate the non veg combo is really famous that they get more orders for their non vegetarian combo than vegetarian combo. Apart from the cost per plate of food, customers are also charged for home delivery based on the distance in kilometers from the restaurant to the delivery point. The delivery charges are as mentioned below. For the first 3 kilometers, the delivery charges is 0. For the next 3 kilometers, 
that is from 4th to 6th kilometer they charge per kilometer they charge 3 rupees so up to 6 kilometers so first 3 kilometers comes with a low charge and the next 3 kilometers so for the first 6 kilometers so the first uh, out of uh, if the delivery is uh, uh, the delivery point from the restaurant is about to be 6 kilometer then first 3 kilometers is no charge and the next 3 kilometers rupees 3 per kilometer which comes to 9 rupees then for the remaining if it is above 6 for every single kilometer they will have to add uh, 6 rupees per kilometer if it is going to be uh, 7 kilometers right so for 7 kilometer distance for the first 3 kilometers is zero, 0 charges next 3 kilometers uh, 3 uh, into 3 9 rupees then plus 1 kilometer 6 rupees so 9 plus 6 15 rupees for 7 kilometers the delivery charges will be 15 rupees we need to be very careful with in calculating the distances otherwise the test cases will not pass <clears throat> given the type of food quantity number of plates and the distance in kilometers from the restaurant to delivery point write a python program to calculate the bill the final bill amount to be paid by the customer by the customer the below information must be used to check the validity of the data provided by the customer type of food must be v for vegetarian and n for non vegetarian distance in kilometer must be greater than zero quantity orders should be minimum one in any of the input is invalid the bill amount should be considered as minus one so we'll have to do three checks food type is veg or non veg distance in kilometer should be greater than zero quantity order should be minimum one so let's see how it works let's write the logic for this so we're going to do it for the first vegetarian food so food type is it v we checked it then quantity order is greater than zero and distance in kilometer right it should be uh, it should also be greater than zero right distance in kilometer greater than zero greater than three or greater than six what is it? what if if it is so and so so based on the distance the bill amount is generated right so else the bill amount is minus one again we come to this part this else checks the distance for that we say bill amount is minus one and this is checks the quantity order greater than zero then it says if the quantity order is not greater than zero it gives a bill amount as minus one okay this is a outer if uh, food type is veg v vegetarian food type is non vegetarian else right this is this else talks about food type if food type is uh, either if food type is neither veg nor non veg then it has to give the bill amount as a minus one so take a look at this if you are able to solve it for one type of food then this is the same logic some changes in the values 120 will become 150 that is all would remain same right then you should be able to uh, go ahead and get the results execute this verify this program yes all the test cases are passed and finally submit it so take a look at one section with this you should also be able to develop the remaining part of this program the metro bank provides various types of loans such as car loans business loans and the house loans to its account holders write a python program to implement the following requirements initialize the following variables with appropriate input values account number account balance salary loan type loan amount expected and customer ema expected the account number should be four digits and its first digit should be one the customer should have a minimum balance of rupees one lakh in the account if the above results are valid Determine the eligible loan amount and the EMI that the bank can provide to its customer based on their salary and the loan type they expect to avoid. The bank would provide the loan only if the loan amount and the number of EMIs requested by the customer is less than or equal to the loan amount and the number of EMIs desired by the bank respectively. Display, display appropriate error message for all invalid data if all business rules are satisfied then display account number eligible and requested loan amount and emis test your code by providing different values for the in input values test your code by providing different values for the input variables so if salary is greater than 25000 loan amount uh, loan type expected is car eligible loan amount is uh, 5 lakhs number of emis required by required to repay is 36 if it is for 50000 salary they are they are eligible to avail house loan eligible loan amount is 60 lakhs Number of EMI is required 60. If they uh, get a seven, 75,000 above salary, uh, they can avail a business uh, type of loan. 
uh, eligible loan amount of 75 lakhs and number of EMIs required to repay is 84. Right? So we'll have these are the checkpoints we really need to check and proceed. The account number should be four digits. The customer should have minimum balance one lakh. Um, then if these are valid, then we'll have to uh, loan amount and EMI that the bank can provide. Is it is it uh, is it um, you know lesser than the number of EMIs and the loan amount expected by the customer? But all checks we need to do. Let's go take a look at this, right? And also remember they have given a print statement which we should not touch upon. Use the below given print statement to display the output in case of success. Use the below given print statement to display the output in case of invalid data. Uh, we really need to think before we uh, uh, pop. We'll have to populate the variables like eligible loan amount and the bank EMI expected. So we're gonna have check account number is greater than because uh, they said it should be a four digit number and the number should start with one. Then the account balance should be account balance should be uh, minimum account balance they said it should be one lakh rupees, right? Yes. One lakh. So account balance should be greater than ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, and uh, flown time is equal to car, and salary is greater than twenty five thousand. So we're going to process it for the first segmented loan. Salary greater than twenty five thousand. Car type of loan is car. Eligible amount is fifty thousand. Expected EMI should be thirty six. So number of uh, EMIs required to repay is thirty six. So we have written the code. If you are able to do it for one section of this, right, car loan, right then the same could be implemented for the remaining so there's a customer EMI expect, ex, expected should be less than or equal to 36 and loan EMI expected should be less than or equal to 5 lakh then they are eligible for the 5 lakh loan and the bank EMI expected is 36 but see look at this uh, the type of account number is 104 yes it is valid um, then the salary is salary is second parameter salary salary is 40,000 and the account balance is account balance is 2 lakh 5,000 Type of loan is car, and the amount they expect is uh, loan amount they expect is three lakh, and the EMI they expect is thirty thousand, thirty EMIs. So, which is uh, loan amount is actually eligible amount is five lakh. So, this amount is three thousand is less than five six, uh, five lakhs. In bank EMI expect is thirty six, customer EMI expect is thirty, which is within the limit. So, the the, the bank the customer is eligible for the loan, right? Then finally, we will have to display flag if they are eligible for load i have set i have used variable limit is flag i have set it as one by default the flag value is zero when it is processed when the loan is about to be processed i said flag is one your flag is equal to one then we will print account number the customer can avail loan amount eligible emi requested loan amount and requ requested emi so all that will be displayed so once you're able to do it for one thing and you should also be able to do it for the remaining thing. they also have given set of print print uh, print statements like the customer is not eligible for loan, we will have to mention it in the right place. When this condition fails, then you can say customer is not eligible for the loan. And when um, <coughs> you know, uh, other we also have um, invalid loan type or salary. When the loan type is not about to be car or salary is not about to be greater than uh, twenty five thousand, if when loan amount loan type is not house and the salary is not greater than fifty thousand, when loan type is not business and salary is not greater than seventy five thousand. Then we say invalid loan type or salary. Again, when the loan amount is not greater than uh, 99,000, greater than or equal to 1 lakh, then we say ins insufficient account balance. When the account number is not uh, within the limit, within the uh, greater than um, uh, 999 uh, and less than 2000, it's a four, it should be a four digit, but uh, the, it should start with one. Then we say invalid account number. So these are the uh, predefined print of statement given in this program we should be uh, knowing where to put it uh, use right if you are able to put it in the right place then all the test cases will pass that's a simple logic behind this code so have a look at this first section is car second section is house the third section is business loan type then for every uh, in a study later we should have a proper uh, else part uh, print statement right so if you're able to do it then finally flag if it is successful then you will display these results execute this you get the result something like this verify it 
all the test cases are passed then you can submit it so this is the last uh, assignment of this section this day to write a python program to generate and display the next date of a given date assume that date is provided as day month and year as shown in below table the input provided is always valid output should be a day month year print day hyphen month hyphen year will display uh, day month year say for example sample input is 19 2015 day is 1 month is 9 year is 2015 then we'll have to give the output like 29 2015 also identify the test data and use it to test the program so we'll have to submit the code then we'll have to test whether it is a pass as, as we did for the previous exercises i would request you to try for this so we have placed a simple logic behind this if month one month months one three five seven eight and ten have got 30 days right and um, sorry 31 days uh, second month has got 28 days you can also add logic for a leap year right if it is going to be leap year will have a 28 days in the, in the month of february and month uh, 4 6 9 11 has got they have got uh, 30 days right so apply simple mechanism if the month is about to be december uh, the logic for the same is different right that, that's what i have mentioned in the else part this else part talks about uh, this one the else part talks about december month the remaining of months i have say if the day is going to be uh, greater than 0 and less than 31 let's say 5 right so day should become 6 we'll have to give the next day 6 so next month will be the same month no difference on the month if the day is about is about to be uh, greater than uh, uh, 30 if it's going to be 31 then the day will, will have to become 1 because 31 january let's say if the given date is 31st january then the next uh, should be uh, 1st february so that is why the next day value is given as a 1 and the month is increasing from 1 to 2 year will remain same so uh, that, that is a simple example i've given and with the same manner well if it is going to be february the same logic one day will increase if it is going to be within uh, days of 0 and 27 0 and 28 uh, the 1 and 28 right greater than 0 is 1 and less than 27 is uh, you know 27 it's going to be uh, less than 2 i think we should have less than or equal to 27 then we'll have day plus 1 27 if the date is february 27 is the given date then you'll have to display 28th february if it's going to be beyond this then the day next day will be 1 next month will be march right february to march it goes to march then finally we display let's look at an example here they have given us let's give 27 february right be it any year if it's going to be december month if it is going to be december month the logic is different so it has to give us 28 to 2015 this is for the uh, december month if you're going to give a december month uh, within the if it is going to be um, you know uh, if it is going to be uh, one between one and 31 if it's going to be within this 31 uh, then no problem if it is the date is 30 then you will say 31st december next date is 31st december if the day is going to be 31 the next day should become one month also should become one year should become a different year so let's same example 31 12 right figure 12 2015 now it has to give us 1 1 2016 so it gives us 1 1 2006 so only part i missed in this logic is February month. I have not done. If it's going to be leap year, we can also add conditions to check whether the given is a leap year. If it is leap year, then we'll have to take one more day extra. Otherwise, the logic would remain same. And I would request you to work on that. The remaining all same. So I did generate, identify the test data and test apply the necessary values. Whether you take some sample values, check some boundary conditions, put the actual output verify it then if it is successful mentioned success or fail then finally submit it that's it thank you